The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> and now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, let's look in on the little town of Melrose Springs, home of that popular radio entertainer, Honest Harold the Homemaker. It's one of those beautiful spring mornings when the sun is shining, the birds are singing, and Honest Harold is... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's it for? Zoop, 8 o'clock. <sighs> Late for work. Why didn't that alarm go off? Oh... Of course, it's Saturday. <laughs> I don't have to go to work. It's worth waking up just to find out I can go back to sleep. <laughs> just close my eyes and drift off into... Hi, Ralph! Say, are you still sleeping? Well, I was till you came crashing in here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are you going to get up now? I certainly am not Gosh, Harold You said you were going to take me fishing today I know, Marvin But we don't have to go at the crack of dawn Besides, no respectable bluegill is up at this hour Ah, oh, gee, Harold I'm up and dressed and everything Well, go out and dig a pail of worms Dig two pails I've already got the worms Look, Harold Marvin, get that pail out of my face <laughs> I'll make a bargain with you, Marvin let me sleep one more hour, then I'll get right up and we'll go. Okay. See you in an hour. That's right. Uh, he's a fine boy. Uh, uh, well, at least I can sleep one more. Harold! No, what? I'm sorry I woke you up. Uh, that's all right, my boy. But as long as you're awake, sure you don't want to get up now? More. Okay. Ooh, that boy. Now what? Forgot my worms. Get those worms off my pillow. <laughs> oh, well, I might as well get up now. Another cup of coffee, Harold. Yeah, uh, please, Mother. I need something to keep me awake. Mm. Uh, hey, Harold. Yeah, what is it, Marvin? Aren't you through with breakfast yet? I'm all ready to go. Good. Do you mind if I have this last cup of coffee? No. Take your time. But I'm all ready to go. Yeah, I understand that, Marvin. I'll put our fishing rods in the car. Yeah, you do that. Whoopee! We're going fishing! <laughs> Mother, I wonder if we're giving that boy too many vitamins. Oh, Harold. It's awfully nice of you to take him out today. Well, I've been promising the boy all week. He'd like to sleep a few more hours, but what the heck. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Do I hear what I think I hear? Yes, Harold. That Mr. Walker in his tractor. Oh, I was afraid of that. Oh, Millie! <laughs> Sounds like he's celebrating the 4th of July early this year. Now, Harold. Mother, what do you see in that Rip Van Winkle Romeo? Oh, he's very nice, Harold. Uh, Come in, Ogilby. Good morning. <laughs> Singing Sam. <laughs> oh, good morning, Ogilby. How are you this morning, Emily? My, you're blooming like a rose that's just been kissed by the morning dew. Oh, <laughs> oh hello, crooner. Didn't see you sitting there. How's the Sinatra of the silos? <laughs> hey. Very amusing Say, Bertha, my cow wants you to croon a special number for her I know this is a straight line, Walker But what does your cow want me to sing? I'm in the mood for love Oh <laughs> Well, tell me, what are you doing in town so early, Ogilvy? Well, Emily, it was such a beautiful day Just thought I'd hop into my tractor, whiz into town and call on my lady fair. <laughs> Had to pick up a few radish seeds, too. 
Oh, I'm glad you came by. Emily, I was wondering if you'd like to come out and spend the day at my farm. Oh, I'd love to, Ogilvy. You can come, too, if you want to, Sonny. I can take the bitter with the sweet. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, I just thought you might give me a hand with the chores, but I guess that'd be roughing it for a city dude like you. Oh? Uh, what makes you think farm work is so hard? Milking a cow, feeding a few puny pigs. Well, anybody can do that. Well, then why don't you come out and do it? Well, I'd like to, but I can't today. I promised little Marvin I'd take him fishing. Thank goodness. Harold, the stuff's in the car. Ready to go now? Yes, I am, Marvin. Oh, hello, Mr. Walker. Well, hello there, little fella. How'd you like to come out and visit my farm today? Farm? No, thanks. I'd rather go fishing. Yeah, see, Mr. Walker? Mm, too bad. You won't get to see the pony. Pony? Do you have a real pony out there? What a sneaky thing to do. <laughs> well, come on, Marvin. Can't keep the fish waiting. <laughs> Mr. Walker, if I came out to your farm, could I ride the pony? You sure could. But, uh, Gosh, Harold, a real pony. Can't we go, please? Well, all right, my boy. Oh, thanks. But, but Harold, what do you do while I'm riding the pony? Well, uh... Yeah, we'll find plenty of things for him to do. Plenty of things. I hate him. Well, here we are. Hold on, Emily. I'm going to make a sharp turn. All right, Ogilvy. Watch me cut into the driveway without slowing down. Slowing down? We're only going four miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, let me help you down, Emily. Oh, thank you. Come on, Harold, let's get out. Marvin, I don't think I can walk. <laughs> My, what a lovely place you have here. What a cute little white house. Well, thank you, ma'am. It ain't so much, but it's home to me. Uh, oh, it takes a heap of living to make a house a home. A barnyard Edgar Guest. <laughs> pretty foul, too. Where's the pony? What did you say? That's pretty Where's foul, too. No. Somebody said something about a pony. Uh. Oh, well, the pony's out in the barn there. You go take a look at him, and I'll saddle him up as soon as I do a few chores here. Okay. Why don't you go with him, Emily, and I'll see you in a little while, huh? <laughs> All right, Ogilvy. Come on, Mark. Hey, wait a minute. I'll go with you. Yeah, hold on there, Sonny. What? How about help me feed the pigs? Feed the pigs? Should be easy for an old farmhand like you. But, Mr. Walker... And see you don't fall in the pig pen, Sonny. Uh, I wouldn't know which one was you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, look at them pigs eat. Yeah, you look at them. Cute little fellas, aren't they? Oh, yeah, beautiful. Well, I better go down to the barn and saddle up the pony for Marvin. Yeah, good idea. See, Mr. Walker, isn't it almost lunchtime? Yeah, pretty soon. How'd you like some nice fluffy scrambled eggs? Oh, sounds wonderful. When do we eat? Soon as you get the eggs. <laughs> huh? There's a hen house right there, Sonny. Just walk right in. But I... I'll see you later. Don't take any glass eggs. <laughs> uh, how do I get into these things? Last time I'll ever get me out on this farm. Takes a heap of living. Oh, brother. Well, <laughs> uh, guess I'll have to go in there. Whew. Stuffy in here. <laughs> Hello, little hens. Eggman. <laughs> Had a busy morning? <laughs> yeah, let's see here now. Uh, no eggs in this nest. Nothing in this one. Wonder if today's a holiday. <laughs> let's see, how about this nest? <laughs> Hen's still sitting on it. Hello, Hortense. <laughs> Any eggs today? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good service. <laughs> Hortense, may I have that egg, please? 
Hortense, old girl, would you mind standing up a minute? <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Guess I should have worn my chicken inspector badge. <laughs> Well, guess I'll have to reach in under. Yeah, steady, girl. <laughs> Maybe my hands are cold. <laughs> I'll come in from the side where she can't see me. <laughs> Must have her own radar system. <laughs> Why, George, no hen can intimidate me. I'm going to get that egg. Oh, my goodness. Um, get quiet, girls. Okay, we'll open a can of sardines. Uh, I knew this was going to be one of my bad days. Hi, Hal. Oh, hello, Marvin. Look at me. I'm riding a pony. Oh, that's fine, my boy. His name is Prince. Oh, uh, hello, Prince. <laughs> Sounds like old man Walker. <laughs> well, I gotta be going now, partner. Prince and I have to go look for cattle rustlers. What? Oh, oh, cattle rustlers. Oh, sure. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Giddy up, Prince. Yeah. No! <laughs> well, anyway, little Marvin's enjoying himself. I think I'll just lie down under this nice tree, take a little snooze. <sighs> Fresh air makes you feel kind of sleepy. <sighs> Hi there, Sonny. <laughs> Caught you, didn't I? Yes, yes. What are you laying down for, Sonny? All worn out already? Of course not. I'm not tired at all. Good. Then you can milk the cow. Huh? I got you that time. <laughs> what an obnoxious character. <laughs> Mr. Walker, it's kind of dark in this barn. Ooh. Well, there she is. Just sit down on that little stool and milk her. Well, okay. Uh, suppose you think I can't do it, Ooh. huh? Yeah, steady, bossy. This is going to hurt me more than it does you. Who's that? Oh, I called up town and invited some of your friends out. What? Yeah, your lady friend, Flora Bell, Dr. Yancey, and Pete the Marshal. Now, look here, Walker. You had no business to... Farmer Hemp's in the barn, folks. Come right in. Show starts any minute. Walker. <laughs> well, hello, Harold. How's my farm boy today? Uh, hello, Flora Bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, hello, Doc. Yeah. Howdy, Hiram. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Pete. <laughs> Hey, look at Harold sitting beside that cow. <laughs> don't he make a pretty milkmaid? <laughs> I don't know. Which one's the cow? <laughs> yeah, I can see I'm in for it. Well, Harold, I didn't know you knew how to milk a cow. Me either. Show him how it's done, Sonny. Yeah, why doesn't he shut up? Well, there's uh, really nothing to it. Just put the bucket under here, I think. Let's see here. I'm confused a bit, though. Eeny, meeny, miny. <laughs> well, here goes. <laughs> well, Harold, you, you didn't get much that time. Hey, maybe that cow gives condensed milk. <laughs> Smart Alex. Well, Harold, can't you do better than I? Certainly, I'm just getting started. This time I'll... Ooh, bossy, get your tail out of my face. I'm blinded. Where are you, bossy? Oh, oh, there. Yeah. No, by George, you're going to give me some milk. <coughs> what? You're pulling on my elk's tooth. You... <laughs> hey, maybe he's trying to get elk's milk. Oh. Ain't that a dude? <laughs> oh, goodness sake. Oh, there's the bell. Guess Emily's got lunch, Rennie. Come oh. on, folks. Oh, boy, food. Uh, Here I come. Come on, Miss Florida. All right. No, you go ahead. I'm not hungry. Well, how do you like life on the farm, Sonny? <laughs> oh, go haunt a cornfield, will you? We will return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. But now, a special announcement of interest to those of you who have written us requesting copies of What is a Boy, which Mr. Perry read on the program last week. 
Your letters have been forwarded to the New England Mutual Life Insurance Company of Boston, Massachusetts, in whose advertisement What is a Boy originally appeared. You'll be receiving your copies very shortly. And now back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Honest Harold's day on the farm wasn't a very happy one. His adventures with the livestock made him the laughing stock Oop. in front of all his friends. And, of course, the one laughing the loudest was Mr. Walker. Yeah, someday I'll get even with him. It's the following Monday morning now, and Harold is just entering the radio station. Good morning, Station KSJP. I'll connect you. Well, good morning, Glory. Oh, good morning, Harold. How are things down on the farm? What? <laughs> Milked any cows lately? <laughs> Oh, who's been talking to you, Gloria? Mr. Walker. Yeah, I suppose he's told everybody in town about me by now. Oh, no, he hasn't told everybody. Uh? He said he had three more stops to make. <laughs> Good. Well, I better go on in. Almost time for my program. All right, Harold. I'll get back to my book. Oh? What are you reading, Gloria? Oh, it's a book on etiquette. It's called The Salad Fork and I. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, our canasta club is giving a formal dinner tonight, and I don't want to make any faux pas. Faux pas? Yes. You can look pretty foolish at a formal dinner, and I'm just a country girl. Well, say, Gloria, just thought of something. I know a country boy who would look pretty foolish at a formal dinner. Who's that? Mr. Walker. You've given me an idea how to get even with that barnyard busybody. I bet he doesn't even know a salad fork from a pitchfork. Oh. <laughs> is he going to a formal dinner, Harold? Well, he doesn't know it yet, but he sure is. And this time, the laugh is going to be on him. <laughs> <laughs> This is a wonderful idea. <laughs> I hope old Rumpelstiltskin's home. Walker talking. Go ahead. It's your nickel. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what a cornball. Hello, Mr. Walker. Why, hello, Sonny. Want to come out and milk an elk's tooth? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Walker, I'm giving a dinner party at the Antler Hotel tomorrow night, and I'd like for you to be the guest of honor. Well, be glad to, Sonny. Ought to be good for a few laughs. Yeah, you sure should. <laughs> it's going to be quite a swanky affair. We'll dress, of course. Wouldn't come any other way. <laughs> no, I said it looked pretty funny, me running... I up. heard you, Walker. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow night, then. Antler Hotel, 8 o'clock. I'll be there. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. I hate myself for doing things like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fellows, I'm giving a swanky dinner party tomorrow night at the a a Antler Hotel, and I'd like you both to come. Well, I'd be delighted, boy. Yeah, good, Pete. Yeah, me too, Harry. Fine, Doc. It's going to be sort of formal, boy, so put on your best bib and tucker. <laughs> oh, formal, huh? Yeah, it's going to be in the moose room. Oh, I suppose all the moose will be wearing tails. <laughs> uh, very, very, very funny. You two characters act like you've never heard of a formal dinner party. Oh, don't you worry about us, boy. We can be classy with a demi tassy. <laughs> no. Oh, Doc, will you ask the waiter to bring in the horse's duvers? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't see the waiter. Just a minute, I'll have the napkin ring. <laughs> Abbott and Costello in society. See you tomorrow night, comedians. Moose room. <laughs> Awfully sweet of you to give this big dinner party, Harold. Well, really nothing, Flora Bell. Well, it's crowded in the moose room tonight, isn't it? Yeah. And that's a mattress salesman's convention in town there. Oh? That sleepy-looking bunch in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the others would get here so we could start the party. Yeah, Flora Bell, mm -hmm. rented this dress suit for the occasion. Oh? How do I look in tails? Oh, you look awfully handsome, Harold. Mm -hmm. Just like the man on the Prince Albert tobacco can. <laughs> I hope this suit doesn't go up in smoke. <laughs> Floor bell. Mm -hmm. How about me stealing a little kiss? Now, Harold. Oh, come on. 
Nobody will see us if we hide behind the water pitcher. Oh, Harry. Oh. Hello, Doc. Evening, folks. Oh, good evening, Pete. Dr. Yang. Sit right down, fellas. We'll have dinner as soon as Mother and Mr. Walker gets here. All righty. Thank My, you. you're looking lovely tonight, Miss Flora Bell. You sure are. That's a beautiful dress. Oh, thank you, sirs. It's just a plain little old strapless organdy. <laughs> <laughs> How do I look, fellas? Who's looking at you, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Yeah. Oh, there's your mother, Harold. Good evening, Mrs. Harold. Ah, Good evening, sure. everyone. Oh, hey, Sit right down here, mother. Oh, thank you, son. Uh, where's uh, Mr. Walker? He'll be right in. He's out in the parking lot loosening his spark plugs. Mm -hmm. He's afraid someone will steal his Rio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What a heck. Will he be embarrassed tonight? Oh, here he comes. Hello, everybody. You can start munching your olives. The life of the party's here. <laughs> oh, hey. Look at him. Ponji suit and a red bow tie. Good evening, Mr. Walker. Hello there. You seen Harold Hemp? I'm Harold Hemp. Oh, I thought you was a waiter. <laughs> your information, Mr. Walker, it's proper to wear a formal attire at a dinner party. My apologies, son. Here, let me shake the hand of a well-dressed man. Well, all right, Mr. Walker. Shake. <laughs> <laughs> Got a buzz out of that, didn't you, Sonny? <laughs> Got you that time. Oh, sit down and stop lighting up that bow tie. <laughs> all right, the batteries are weak anyway. I'll sit down here by you, Emily. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, ain't we going to eat pretty soon, boy? Oh, of course, Pete. I'll call the waiter. Uh, hey. Garçon! Oh, Garçon! Uh, Sonny, his name is Frank. I know that. Frank Eisenminger. Huh? You used to know his father. He was a blacksmith. Uh? Old Dad Eisenminger. Yeah. <laughs> I know. He's a doll, yeah. Yeah, did you wish to order, Mr. Hemp? Uh, yes, would you pass around the menus, please? Certainly. Menu. Menu. Yeah. Menu, sir? Wait till Walker takes a look at the menu. It's all in French. <laughs> yes, yeah, his menu looks like it's in code. <laughs> You better order for us, Sonny. Oh, no, Mr. Walker. You're the guest of honor. <laughs> Why don't you order for all of us? Me? Sure. Go ahead. Well, let me see here. <laughs> I got them. Lee. Let's see. Lee Poisson. Say, they got poison on this menu. <laughs> That's French for fish. Imagine anybody not knowing that. <laughs> hey, how about some of this stuff at the bottom of the menu here? Oh, you mean the Chateaubriand Garnier? That's a special steak, the most expensive dish on the menu. Oop. Um, how much is it? Five dollars a plate. <laughs> Steaks for everybody. I got you that time. <laughs> yeah, very well. Steak for you too, Mr. Hemp. No, just bring me a moose burger, a la 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Having a wonderful time, aren't you, Harold? Well, pretty good. Mr. Walker certainly seems to be enjoying himself. Mm -hmm. And you're a beautiful tango dancer. The way you slide and glide and slip and dip. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> oh, look at your mother and Mr. Walker doing the tango. Aren't they cute? Yeah, the mother is. Look at old Mr. Walker. Every time he dips, he looks like he's gone down for the last time. <laughs> What's going on now, Barbara? Now, uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we'll now have the Moose Room Dance Contest with this beautiful loving cup going to the most popular couple on the floor. Now, choose your partners, everyone. I got my partner. Yeah, listen, old man Walker. Well, this is one place I'll show him up. Hope they play another tango for a bell. Darn it, a waltz. Oh, well. Come on, wonderful one. All right. Mm -hmm. Just you, only you, in the silvery twilight, mm -hmm. moonlight. It's you. <laughs> Carol, uh, Mr. Walker's a good waltzer. Yes. Why, he's just floating around the room. I wish he'd float up into the air conditioner. <laughs> ta, 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 ta. Hey, Sonny, you trying to waltz or do you always walk that way? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, that's 
just two couples left on the floor now. Mr. Hemp and partner and Mr. Walker and partner. Yeah, darn that Walker. Come on, Emily. Let's twirl. Whee! Shh, show off. I hope his shoelaces come undone. Yeah, now I, I want you folks to judge the winner. First, Harold Hemp and partner. Harold, you're not supposed to applaud. Oh. <laughs> and now, Mr. Walker and partner. Yeah, must have his relatives here. Hooray for Walker! He's our boy. Listen to Doc and Pete, the dirty traitors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of our dance contest and this beautiful loving cup, Mr. Walker and partner. Hey! hey! Speech! Yeah, Benedict Arnold. Uh, well, uh, thank you, folks. I owe it all to my beautiful partner, Emily Hemp. <laughs> oh, Ogilvy. Well, anyway, Mother's happy. Harold, I'm so glad you gave this dinner party. I've had such a wonderful time. Well, I'm glad you did, Mother. Well, I guess the best man won, Sonny. No hard feelings, I hope. Oh, of course not. Let's shake hands. Sure, Sonny. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Got you that time, Walker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, here is Harold Perry. Uh, thanks, Bob. I want to shake hands? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone once said, the good that men do lives after them. But I believe that it's even better to encourage honesty while a do-gooder is still around to enjoy it. And this is where you listeners can play an important part. Every hour of each day, some youngster has done an honest deed which escapes the attention of most of us. I'd like to call attention to one of these deeds each week so that everyone will know about it. We feel that this recognition will encourage honesty in others, and that it's a powerful weapon for combating juvenile delinquency. Now, if you know of some outstanding deed of honesty done by some boy or girl, please write and tell me about it. Your letters will be read by screen actor Kirk Douglas, Los Angeles County Sheriff Eugene Biscalouse, and me. Send your letters to Harold Perry, Columbia Broadcasting System, Hollywood 28, California. And from the letters we receive, one outstanding deed of honesty will be selected each week, and the deserving boy or girl will receive a beautiful Wittenauer watch, a distinguished member of the Longine Wittenauer family of fine watches. Remember, send your letters to me, Harold Perry, Columbia Broadcasting System, Hollywood 28, California. And the name selected will be announced on this program each week. Now, you surely must know some youngster in your community who is deserving. Please let me know about it, too. Thank you. And good night. You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Parley Bear, Shirley Mitchell, Cliff Arquette, Stuffy Singer, Jack Moyles, David Light, and featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Don't forget the letters, folks. Norman McDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. Bill Harris and Alice Fay are your stars on radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense, tomorrow evening on most of these same CBS stations. Now stay tuned for the Bing Crosby Show which follows immediately. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, where you meet Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons every Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.